I'm Dr. Scott Potler. Today I'll discuss one method of sclerobuchal surgery for the repair of retinal detachment. I'd like to use this eye model to review the anatomy of the eye. The outer coat of the eye is like leather, it's not like an eggshell. It's called the sclera and is normally covered by a thin layer of skin called the conjunctiva. If you get inflammation of the conjunctiva, you have conjunctivitis. The sclera, though, provides support to the eye. The front window is the cornea, allowing light to enter the eye and focus light into the eye back to the retina. Filling the center of the eye is a thick gel. There are fibers in the gel that are stretched out and are lightly attached to the retina when you're born. As we age, these fibers will often separate or pull away from the retina. The retina is like the wallpaper inside the eye. The retina functions like film in a camera. It takes the picture and sends the message to the brain through the optic nerve. With aging, the vitreous gel often will pull away from the retina, causing new floating objects, spots, and specks in the vision, and sometimes causes light flashes as the fibers tug and pull against the retina. If the vitreous fibers pull too hard, they can tear the retina, and the tear in the retina then may progress to retinal detachment. In retinal detachment, the retina, which is supposed to be attached to the eye wall, pulls away or becomes detached from the eye wall. Detached retina doesn't function well and causes a dark curtain or shadow in the vision. One method to repair retinal detachment is called a sclerobuchal surgery. In a sclerobuchal surgery, a band or belt is placed around the eye, underneath the muscles, somewhat like this rubber band is around this eye, eye model. The, the sclerobuchal or belt creates a ledge of support internally, so the sclera slightly buckles in or indents, and that creates a ledge of support for the retina, allowing it to remain attached. Here is an artist's rendition of the eye as seen in cross-section with labels. Here is a photograph of detached retina associated with a horseshoe-shaped tear. This eye is being prepared for surgery with surgical scrub and drapes to reduce the risk of infection. This eye has a natural lens which you can see as an opalescent grayness in the pupil. This is part of the reason sclerobuchal was opted to repair the detachment so as to reduce the risk of cataract formation, which is more common in vitrectomy repair. The black spot on the camera image is a light shield to protect the retina from the operating microscope light. Here I'm making an incision in the conjunctiva, which overlies the sclera. The conjunctival incision is extended 360 degrees around the limbus, or the edge of the cornea. This patient was on aspirin for a heart problem, so there was more bleeding than average. Now, scissors are being used to separate the conjunctiva and the tenons layer from the sclera in each of the quadrants between the four rectus muscles. Here we use a instrument to pass a black silk tie suture around the inferior rectus muscle and then tie it so we have that muscle secured. The same for the medial rectus muscle.
the lateral rectus muscle. and the superior rectus muscle so that we can turn the eye and get access to the sclera in order to prepare for the encircling scleral silicone band. At this point, indirect ophthalmoscopy is performed. Cryopexy is used to seal the retinal tears down and mark the sclera where the belt will be placed. Here you see a blue mark on the sclera. That's where the retinal tear is located internally. Using calipers, we mark the sclera where we want to place a mattress suture. These sutures will hold in place the scleral band. One mattress suture is placed in each of the quadrants between the rectus muscles. Another mattress suture placed in this infranasal quadrant. These sutures are placed within the sclera and do not enter the eye. Now the last quadrant for the mattress suture, again centered on the mark where the retinal tear, another retinal tear was located. You can see how these mattress sutures form a, a double belt loop for the scleral band. Now we pass the band through the belt loop sutures and secure them by tying down the mattress sutures. Here we pass the scleral buckle band underneath the bustle, again through another mattress suture. Underneath the inferior rectus muscle. Here we go back to the other end of the scleral band, reaching underneath the superior rectus muscle, passing the band through there, and then through the mattress suture in the supranasal quadrant. We pass the band beneath the medial rectus muscle 
and through the infranasal matra suture. Here we join the two ends of the band with a sleeve, a silicone sleeve. In this case, because the retinal detachment is very shallow, we'll remove some fluid from the anterior chamber with a 30 gauge needle to soften the eye and make room for the buckling effect as we pull the sclerobuckle up into place, which we do now. Trimming the ends of the band. Now we can remove the traction silk ties from around the muscles and then bring the conjunctiva and tenons forward for a careful closure to diminish the chances of the buckle exposing itself or becoming infected. I like to bury the surface sutures so that the knot is beneath the surface of the conjunctiva. It makes uh, for a, a smoother healing for the patient with less uh, sensation like there's something in the eye, less foreign body sensation. I'll often irrigate some marcaine around the conjunctiva to diminish uh, early postoperative discomfort. This video is produced for and dedicated to my patients. It is for informational purposes only and is not intended for advice or treatment recommendations. If you have problems with your eyes, please consult your ophthalmologist or retinal specialist. Thank you.